What do you do when about 95% of your thinking is negative? That's what we're going to talk about. So it's not uncommon for a lot of our thoughts to be in a negative space. And what we're going to talk about in this video is a little bit about mindset and how can we go about changing that to something a little bit more helpful because it's definitely not a helpful thing to have your mind constantly just feeding drip feeding negativity all day long but it is possible to do something about it and there is a way to do it but i'm going to read a question here from ivana and uh, this video is for ivana so ivana's question is um, and again you know as always just see if you resonate with anything ivana says in this question my thoughts are a million miles away from positivity. And the balance is just so heavily skewed to the negative. I read somewhere that about 60 to 90,000, we have around 60 to, 60 to 90,000 thoughts a day. I don't actually know how they know that. I've read that myself as well. Well, for me, 95% must be negative. Or I just zone out and it feels like I'm not thinking at all. Is it even possible to do something about this? And if so, where do I start? So, Ivana, you're certainly not alone in this. And it's, as we'll talk about, kind of the default setting is for our minds to be unhelpful or to have this kind of drip feed of negativity. So unfortunately, that does seem to be the default. And it's as if we don't do something about it, if we don't become more proactive, nothing will change. But there is a way to be proactive that will help change with this. The first step is, with this, it's an awareness that we have a perceptual problem. The way we're seeing the world, I mean, if it's 95% negative, isn't that strange? That's almost like, you'd imagine if it was random, it would be 50-50 half positive, half negative, but there's definitely a perceptual sort of uh, bias taking place here that it's so heavily skewed towards the negative. And it's like, okay, well, if there's 60 to, to 90,000 of these thoughts a day, and it's so many negative thoughts, well, how the heck am I going to go about reversing that, that sort of conditioned pattern of thinking that's there? Well, you see, the good news about it is, okay, first of all, we have to accept that there is a perceptual problem. I need to do something to kind of proactively move out of that, that state of consciousness. But the good news is that really, while there, are the, there can be so many of these overpowering negative thoughts, there's really only two mindsets we can find ourselves in. Okay, whatever words you want to use to describe those, you can be in a positive or a negative one. You can be in a fear-based uh, mindset or you can be in a more self-expressive or maybe a loving mindset or a supportive, encouraging mindset. So that kind of makes it a little bit simpler for us. It's no longer this gargantuan task of bringing awareness to all the thoughts and then correcting each thought. I mean, we would be really stuck if that was the case. Really, the good news is all that this, all, all we really need is to shift out of a mindset of negativity or a mindset of judgment and condemnation and being self critical all the time into an alternative mindset. Okay, so it's basically it's a choice that we need to make and we need to get trained in making that choice repetitively and regularly. So all we're looking for is just a shift in mindset. One of the ways that we start to do that is we start to focus less on the form that we see externally or the form of our life or um, by, by form, I mean all the various problems because when we're in that negative mindset, it is so, so easy to just stay being fixated on problems all the time. And you'll notice, I mean, 95% negative. When we're in that negative mindset, it, it's almost as if every area of our life is just surrounded and mired in problems. Okay, so it's money problems, relationship problems, uh, problems with my physical appearance, problems with my friends, my family, you name it. Where the place I live, 
societal problems, right? Uh, problems in the country where I'm from. It, when we're in that mindset, it's almost as if everything we're perceiving is problematic. And we can stay fixated on that. So one of the ways we can do it is just less of, of an, an attention to the, the form that we're, that we're seeing externally and more in towards our own will or our own choice for effectively, well, okay, this is what my mind is showing me. How would I prefer to feel in my life? How would I prefer to feel emotionally? What would I prefer to see even externally? But to be less fixated on what the mind is constantly highlighting because we're actually not seeing the truth the mind, as I said before, has this bias in perception towards the negative, and that's what it's showing us again and again. So to be less fixated on form or cont uh, what we're actually seeing, and more back into the, uh, uh, an appreciation or respect for our own will in determining how we would like to perceive things. This brings us back into, that's personal responsibility, but it's also self-empowerment. And the other thing is we don't really need to make any big leaps here in terms of going from feeling really low despair, helpless, powerlessness, depression into feeling like a million dollars, right? We don't have to go from huge shifts here in this. We don't have to do that. We're just looking for any little shift at all because if you make any shift away from negativity to positivity, you automatically find yourself in a different mindset. It's like if you get a, a, like a, a good piece of news or something. Maybe you're just having the worst day ever, right? Someone gives you a piece of good news. And it's almost as if you've, you've left an old mindset. And in this new mindset, all those things that were worrying you and, pro and seemed insurmountable before, they don't bother you as much. It's because you left that mindset and you're in a new mindset. You're, in, you're, you're, you're coming at it from a new uh, perceptual vantage point. So we just need any small little steps and corrections will actually help correct the path we're on. So you don't need to, you know, jump up massively in how you're doing in terms of your emotional well-being. We're just lo looking for gradual nudges in away from the negative towards something more helpful. The last point I would say here, Ivana, on this, in terms of this seemingly gargantuan task of shifting away from all this negativity, is that we have some kind of a, a regular practice. CBT is all about changing your thoughts. But any practice at all that you find useful in terms of sh uh, making you feel like you're more in touch with your own well-being, you're starting to feel a bit more positive, very gradually. But when you find a practice, it's to practice it quite regularly. Okay, Because as I said before, the default for us is to be stuck on that inner critic, whatever you want to call it, which is just constantly fixated on the negative. So unless we kind of proactively train our mind in restoring it back into a more healthy, supportive, positive, life-affirming mindset, the default will be to, to stay stuck in that mindset for a while. So whatever it is, even a few minutes of just, what I, I tell people to do is just kind of Get practice in, in writing or even saying to yourself your own story. And that can be good even if you're in a negative place because you're just bringing a self-awareness to what's the story like? What's the narrative running about my life right now? You'd be able to identify where you are essentially by how it makes you feel. But to get practice in just nudging it gradually and regularly towards something that's much more life-affirming and much more supportive of you Anything that makes you feel any kind of improvement in yourself emotionally, you can't be on the wrong path. So it is a regular practice. I even tell people, you know, whatever tool you use, you're the best arbiter of that. You're the judge of what works best for you. Some people who are stuck in negativity, for instance, I'm a big believer in meditation. Sometimes meditation isn't the right tool. You know, if you're stuck in negativity and you sit there and you're meditating. Actually, in your question, you mentioned earlier, um, it either feels like I'm negative or I'm, I zone out and it feels like I'm not thinking at all. 
that that meditation can just become almost a zoning out experience where you're not actually shifting anything in terms of the uh, preponderance, preponderances of thought from negative to, to positive. So meditation could be one of the tools, absolutely, but maybe it's just a different type of tool that's going to shift you, you more sort of a thought-based one. Hopefully that's kind of resonating with something emotionally inside because we really want to get the emotional body involved in any practice like this. Anything that's kind of shifting you slightly, nudging you slightly towards well-being, you're on the right track. So Ivan, I hope that's useful. And again, there is hope in this. You're certainly not alone. The default for most of us, I think, is to be stuck on negativity unless we can be a little bit proactive with it and find something that kind of helps you with that, uh, some kind of daily practice. And I promise you, it'll take a little bit of time, but it's definitely worthwhile doing. And it does work if we're consistent and diligent with it. But be patient with yourself too and always supportive of yourself in that. Guys, I'll leave it there for today, but um, thanks for being with me, and I hope it was something of use for you that you can take away from today's video. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. <laughs>